performance. With the so-called top-down model of management, you have one guy or several people who do all of the resource managing, who put together all of the capital at once, which on top of being more profitable for everyone, this model of management also has a higher time preference, which in turn creates a higher rate of interest due to accelerated satisfaction. <laughs> Here at Intellectuals United, research has been proceeding to conceive a general theory of life cycle hypothesis that establishes new liquidity traps for the Austrian business cycle theory, the economic calculation problem, and the lump of labor fallacy. With arbitrage success as our primary focus, logic has been proceeding on the crudely conceived idea of an aggregate that would not only provide inverse cost-benefit analysis for use in outward investment, but would also be capable of automatically synchronizing asymmetric shock. Such a theory comprised of Austrian economics, Socratic first principles, Rothbard's non-aggression principles, and all monitored by Lou Rockwell Automation's Praxeology is Lou Rockwell's Arbitrage Pricing Theory. Now basically, the only new principle involved is that instead of value being generated by the misery index of regulatory risks and hedge funds, it's produced by the marginal utility of horizontal integration and voluntary unemployment. The original concept had a congratif wave of basis points surmounted by a malleable Big Mac index in such a way that the two demand curves were in a direct line with the barriers to entry. The deduction consisted simply of six output gaps so fitted to the bare animal spirits that the optimal currency area was effectively prevented. The main investment was of the normal Carl Menger type placed in a Laffer curve slots of the stock markets, every seventh time preference being connected by a non-reversible deflation trend to the differential incentive problem on the up end of the leveraged buyout. Moreover, whenever the zero-sum game motion is required, it may also be employed in conjunction with a demand economies of scale x-axis to reduce economic depressions. The arbitrage pricing theory now has reached a high level of development, and it is being successfully used in the operation of econometric calculations. It's available soon, wherever the Lou Rockwell automation books are sold. The Lulberts, that's our word, brought to you by soliciting child pornography to own the libs. No rights reserved, but all mites reserved. And I'm here with Steve Miller Miller, and I'm Jim Jesus, of course. And man, has it been a while since we've done a show. How you been? It's been a it's been a long, hot summer. I'm at my new home here at a more different part of Delaware with even fewer people in it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm, and I'm in my brand new studio in my brand new apartment. Um, and that's pretty much why I've been off the air for so long, is moving. Uh, I didn't even go to Freedom Fest, which I was hoping to do. So I actually was planning on doing a couple We're of We're bragging videos. already in the episode? Good <laughs> gravy. Like I, I... I know. So everything is, uh, everything is new. I've gone weeks without seeing a single libertarian IRL. Yeah, that, that probably is a good thing. <laughs> if we want to start bragging, yeah. I mean... And uh, but yeah. and then I was also dealing with some like weird libertarian stuff, which we're going to get into, like some real. And I should, because I think most of my audience listens just to the podcast, listens to the RSS feed. They don't pay attention to my YouTube channel, so I'm going to have to update this again, uh, even though I've talked about it to death on my YouTube channel. It's the last time I go into depth about it, uh, at least, unless there's some new updates. I'm probably not going to talk about it. But anyways, um, so how is Delaware? Hi, you're in Delaware. Pretty good. Hi, I'm in Delaware. I think that might be the difference between you and me. You say, okay, I'm going to discuss this petty drama one last time, and then that's going to be the end of it. I find a trans woman and start an entire podcast about it. <laughs> yeah, that's true. Um, Special levels. Well, I try Levels well, of petty. Well, here's the thing. Like, I usually try to say, like, I'm not going to talk about more drama about this thing. I'm done. And then, like, new developments come out in it that's so important that you can't help but talk about it 
or something really juicy comes down the pike and you're like, are you kidding me? Are you, are you really this dumb? I have to say something now. Um, but we'll get into that later. I think most people. Uh, no, I think I think some people just want to hear some uh, interesting things about some of the things that's been happening since we've been gone. Um, kind of things around boomer conservatives. Now, you didn't hear about this 31 year old boomer meme, have you? So I am so old that I remember the 54 year old millennial <laughs> okay. Dan Ninen, the comedian. And I, I, maybe he's in some sort of Freaky Friday scenario, and there's an exchange program, and we now have a 31 year old boomer. Mm -hmm. I don't know, but yeah, I was unaware that there's a 30, there's a 31 year old. Boomer. Wait, is it Ben Ferguson? Is Ben Ferguson the 30, the 31 year old boomer? I don't even. Oh, that Scottish Ben comedian? Ferguson's one of those dudes who was born 50 years old. Like I, I, I don't know if you know who this schmuck is, but he's a frequent Fox News contributor and he just he looks 65 years old and even though he's i think in his late 20s and I, I'm yeah, if, he, I'm if, if, if the guy he were revealed as the 31 year old boomer i wouldn't be the least bit shocked i thought you were talking about the uh, comedian that was on the drew carey show the scottish guy that ended up having like the late late show no 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 and then that's he handed it off to that hack. that's craig for craig ferguson okay. that's craig ferguson i'm talking about ben ferguson the conservative Fox News oh, commentator, okay, I, I, an old yeah, I, man. Uh, I saw him on a debate. This is this had to have been maybe ten years ago, where he was on TV bragging about being a virgin. <laughs> that was the one point where I said, "Okay, this fellow, he uh, uh -oh. he's he's really down for the cause." Yeah, Ben Shapiro would be a thirty-one-year-old boomer for sure. Oh um, yeah, definitely. It, it, Thirty-one it, inches too, and and he also likes to brag about how he was a virgin until you got married. Um, mm -hmm. I think Crowder was the same way. I think Crowder was bragging about being a virgin until he got married to his wife Hillary. Um, okay. Oh, that was a subtle, subtle little con dig right there. His wife Hillary. <laughs> bum, bum, bum. His wife's name is Hillary. <laughs> Dog whistle blown oh, no. into. Oh no, but it's a different one because she only has one L in her name. Okay, well that makes everything different. But then again, she that's is. just even closer to Hitler, isn't it? Yeah, she's 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 a lot cuter than Hillary. But anyways, Hitler uh, only that's had not one saying L. Much. Uh, no, but she really is. she's really is cute. Uh, but we should talk about Crowder <laughs> because Crowder is like the epitome of a thirty-one year old boomer, and he talks about all these kind of boomer conservative talking points that are just obviously bullshit. True or false? There are episodes of this show where I say Crowder is a gigantic schmuck and a douchebag, and you, Jim Jesus, say nay, 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 nay. He has a good show. No, I like Stephen Crowder. He's a good comedian. This audio no. exists. Whoa, 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 whoa. Okay, now that's a straw man. I, I've said that like there's lots of times where he's cringe. There's some times where I find him entertaining. Uh, and I liked his show before he went daily. When he was just doing it once a week, it was it was it was something to watch. It was okay. But then when he started doing it daily, he just fucking ran that shit into the ground. All that shit's completely unfunny. And then he does this. This, this thing is when like, he started CRTV, correct? Yeah. CRTV signed Gavin, right? That yes. was like the first big get. Was like they, they were going to no. get Gavin Newsom. No. It, what was the first big get? Uh, make, I think Mark Levin is like one of the guys who heads it. So he's like the big catch. Then oh, Crowder, I see. I, I thought Crowder was the big catch. No, in Crowder that. was the big catch. But they just got Gavin. And but right. Gavin's been passed around all these media things like a like a like a Gavin's been whore. on compound media He's which on... which now we're getting it now we're getting into my wheelhouse <laughs> which is which is where failed comedians go to die so compound media is a subscription service and Anthony Cumia thrown off of Twitter fame is the head of compound media he was also thrown used... off of his own show the also Open thrown off show. of his own show <laughs> <laughs> and he started a network simply so he could say the n-word yeah. And he does that with reckless abandon, and he claims to have a hundred thousand subscribers, but we're on to him, and he has maybe two hundred paid subscribers total. Okay. But yeah, it's a very cringe downfall, and Gavin's downfall is coming. You know, it, it just wait; it, it'll eventually happen. And the Crowder downfall, it sounds like, is already happening. Please do continue with the yeah. downfall of Stephen Crowder. Well, let me just say one thing about Compound Media: there is one good show on it, and that's Michael Malice. That's it. Oh, was it Nightshade? It used to be Your Welcome, but then he moved Your Welcome to, to the that, free. Network. But it's only a half hour long. It used to be a lot longer. It did. 
Oh, man. yeah. And then when 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 uh, in how what was the name of the show that he used to have? You're, You're welcome. welcome. You're welcome. Moved off the network because I think Malice realized that was more bankable if he could put right. take it to a place where it's not behind a paywall that right dozens of people have access to so that got moved off and then there's nightshade which is only a half hour long and compound also is tell will tell you that nightshade is live but if you have their crappy little app because i had compound for a month and then you go at 11 p.m the entire episode's uploaded already so it's not live uh it's clearly pre-recorded what a bunch of crap yeah yeah it's daily i mean he discusses the news that happened that day it, it's not super super pre-recorded but they're selling it as live when it isn't but uh, these scam services your crtvs your compounds like the places like this scammery is the rule not the exception yeah. like the, they they do not deliver what they say they're going to. yeah that's why i never joined the mug club even even when i was still like yeah crowder's okay i was like mm, i'm not paying a hundred dollars a year for crowder and i hate mark levin and i think who was the other person wasn't doesn't michelle uh malkin have a show <laughs> yep oh I, i'm itching to listen to that link lady um i mentioned to look at her but i'm not, nothing else um but then again it's all audio no no she, that's i think it's all video this is video too anyway so um steven crowder the uh, mr uh, the nazis were really left wing uh <laughs> 31 year old boomer uh, has had this is like the second episode that he's done so far uh, where he'll find people talking like crap on the internet, like, oh, if, if I met Steven Crowder, I'd punch him right in the face. Or the last one he did was, that, yeah, someone said that he would like a piece of Crowder after posting a bunch of stuff how he said he wanted to, like, kill ICE or help fund, like, this guy who said that he would pay, like, $500 to anyone who kills, like, a, a member of ICE, uh, the immigration thing or whatever. And so, like, he found out who he was. Like, he basically e stalked him, found out where he, where, uh, where he, uh, who he was, or how to get a hold of him, and like texted him to like go to like this pub. And they, he goes to the pub dressed, I swear to God, like a fucking genie, like a like 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 Aladdin genie, uh, and shows up with a giant like golden turban. He was blue, <laughs> everything but blue. Uh, and like try to confront him and the dude like threw a beer in his face and started just walking away like, like get the fuck away from me what are you doing <laughs> so like if the moral of the story is don't be an internet tough guy because Steven Crowder will show up like some sort of character from uh, like an old fiction book uh, and uh, with the giant poster board of some of your comment internet comments um, okay I feel you kind of buried the lead if he's walking into a bar with a science book fair style project poster board right. of people's people's internet comments yeah put you have to make sure and, and, a, and a camera crew in their heads and a camera crew and he's holding a microphone and he's like hey you want to explain this comment and they're like get the fuck out of here and threw a beer in his face and ran off and then like he started like following him down the street like hey you, you come on why don't you explain this thing like he's like like go away you're a fucking moron like what are you doing <laughs> Over internet, over internet shit. It's it really is like, it's that kid from, uh, you know, like say that to my face, not online, you fucker. <laughs> See what happens, fucker. Right. Like all grown up, and it, and it turned out it was Steven Crowder. So that wouldn't sh that wouldn't surprise me in the slightest. No, they kind of look the same, same color hair. Probably got some braces. This, this all happened in Canada, I'm assuming. No, this no, he's in Austin, Texas now. Remember, he moved. I don't. Okay. Yeah, of course, because you pay attention, you you follow him closely. I'm I'm sure. Um, Not right. Well, he is a failing comedian, so he does okay. kind of fall into my jurisdiction. Is, but yeah, he is a failed comedian. Yeah, yeah. By every definition of the word, like he used to do stand up, but and then he decided uh, to the, quit. The thing is, I don't find him super interesting. Like he's just no. he's just a d bag. Like the the I. Uh, it, it says something about your mental state. If you think that everybody else in the world is walking around just waiting to argue with someone about right. politics, like they're just hoping that there's going to be like a setup on the street. that's like, come argue with me. Uh, <laughs> like even on college campuses, that's not how normal people operate. People have 10,000 things they're worried about. They're not thinking about killing ICE agents. They're not thinking about the non-aggression principle. They're thinking about paying well, he's their not bills. A nap. Oh, you know what? He has been like talking about the nap lately. And it's like, shut up. You don't know what you're talking about. 
I'm not a napper when, anyway. When but. has when has knowing what you're talking about ever been a barrier to entry in that <laughs> CRTV universe? <laughs> it's 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 say the talking points, repeat the talking points, and then that's that. Yeah. They're just as bad as as the like super leftist comedians, except uh, just as unfunny as well. Yeah. Yep. Oh, but he's got this I, I, really cool. This, this shirt. idea that comedians are public intellectuals needs to die very, very quickly. Yeah. And I thought the release of Nanette would kill it, but I'm not so sure. No, uh, will never. This die. idea that 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 the experience of getting on stage in front of strangers and talking about your dick or about how Tinder be crazy, uh, <laughs> well, that just imbues you with a whole bunch of wisdom about the human condition right. that just can't be found anywhere else. Yeah, this whole thing is just and, and I've never absurd. seen a, I've never once ever seen a comedian come up with an original political right argument that was not previously disseminated in the media almost always better by somebody else because they're professionals and you talk about your dick yeah I'm, wait, I'm uh, waiting for the new for the new political ideology the new political wave that's gonna spread kind of like NRX or um, I don't know the alt-right or something like that uh, but for the left that's gonna come strictly from a comedian I'm waiting for that day to happen. He's like, it's a new type of socialism, right? LOL anon. <laughs> I mean, I guess the the last time we had a, 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 a socialist talk, talk about it, like a brand new version of socialism, but he was a painter. He wasn't a comedian. Oh. That's true. We're gonna have to. We're gonna. <laughs> the, it, it, it's not even gonna be stand up comedy. It's gonna be improv. Because I don't. I don't know if you know. There's a lawsuit right now against an improv theater. This I've been following. Uh, a guy got a guy sexually assaulted a woman allegedly. She goes and posts online about it. Which okay. Uh, then his improv theater bans him. And they don't do like any due process or anything like that. They basically run the entire investigation for optimal Facebook likes. They they're they're like, okay, like what is gonna really like righteously own this shitlord? And then they then he sues them and now the the most recent happening is that the court has thrown out the improv theater's motion to dismiss. So Lord knows what's gonna happen. If it winds up with him uh you know, owning the improv theater and turning it into the new compound media studio. <laughs> that would be particularly poetic, but we'll see. Yeah. They're... CRTV live at UCB. It's acronym soup. Maybe they'll have a enough... bunch of maybe they'll have a more... bunch of political talking points. Other people have already said, but they're the direct opposite of the ones we used to give. Hey oh. Maybe they've can... never debated anyone like me before. Yeah, maybe they can afford a new set. Have you noticed that all their shows have the same set? Just different thing on the green screen. That's an all. improv thing. Okay. Yeah, being minimalistic so that you ju <laughs> you operate just on the energy of your crowd's suggestions. Yeah. Oh my God. Anybody who who thinks that democracy is a good idea should go watch some improv comedy. Let the people start suggesting uh, things for things that are things that they think are funny, and watch how that turns out, and then you'll never vote again. Yeah. The, the, whose line is it anyway? When they start doing audience stuff, that's when it gets bad. Yeah. Yeah. Also, when the show starts, <laughs> you don't like you didn't like whose land is it anyway? I mean, for its time, it, for, okay, for its time, whose yeah, land is it anyway yeah. came out. Yeah, when it came out, there weren't a ton of other entertainment options. But could you admit if that were on YouTube, you'd pass right by it if it came up on your suggestions. If it were SJWs yeah. getting owned versus suggestions getting owned on whose line is it anyway, no one's going to go for it. You know, yeah. you want the direct confrontation. You want the downfalls. You want to see public freakouts. You want to see cringe. Like You, you know. want to see Ben Shapiro totally murder someone in cold blood and buries the body in the river. Part one compilation, right? That's what you want to see. <laughs> That's true, except <laughs> and every other I've word is ca in all caps. <laughs> I've noticed that, like, with most things activists do, though, the goalposts are starting to move real, real fast. It, it used to be back in, by God, back in my day, we had to walk up to the SJWs with their blue <laughs> hair and tell them there's only two genders, and then poof, they'd vanish into dust. Now it's videos of Dinesh D'Souza without even any SJWs in the room. He's just talking to other like conservatives, but he says some zinger turn of phrase, and oh, that's apparently good enough good enough to get in my SJW's owned video. I'm like, motherfucker, you haven't even leased the SJWs. Yeah, it's it's always the same two things. Hitler was a Democrat. Or what's the other one? Oh, Democrats are the real racists. 
That's <laughs> yeah. so fucking boomer conservative bullshit. <laughs> I'm so tired of this shit. Being called racist <laughs> is worse than being beaten by the cops. Right, of course. Because that's how they take over everything, is they just call you racist. Oh, there's some truth to that. I mean, come on. Come on, really. <laughs> when when people call me racist, we... I just go like, okay, we're done. <laughs> like, that's it. That's all you have to do. As soon as someone calls you racist, 2018 was okay, the we're year done. that Americans gained the ability to selectively be able to tell when someone's joking and when someone isn't. Mm -hmm. I think that's a skill that... Everybody picked up this year the option of knowing, oh, this person's joking or, oh, I'm going to be outraged because I can't figure out that this person is joking. Yeah. So, yeah, back in the day, you had to go and find your social justice warriors. Now they just come into your Crunchyroll account. But the solution is pretty clear. Don't watch anime. <laughs> I think that's I think that's the best way to solve that problem. But um <laughs> Nobody's come for anime yet. <laughs> no, they, so they have. Problem. The, 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 that's the new thing. That's the new thing. There's this new show that's on Crunchyroll, and everybody's up in arms about it because, I mean, to be honest, like the the show looked kind of mediocre. It's just kind of like okay, but if they just would have like did a trailer for the show, just hey, we have this new show. Look at these characters. Look at the situations, and oh, what kind of wacky stuff are they going to get into today? Everybody would have been like okay, but they insisted on like having half of, like. No, I think it was like the the majority of the trailer wasn't about the cartoon. It was about the production staff and how well they're all diverse and how they're all gay. Some of them are gay and some of them are straight and some of them are trans and some of them are lesbians and half of them are women. And look, they all have purple hair and, and those weird cat lady glasses from the 60s. And everybody was like, well, what the fuck? You didn't even advertise the show. You're just saying, like, we should watch this show because it's diverse. And so everybody's in up in arms about that right now, and it's not well, even it's not it's, a yeah, it's not even really anime. I think anime has to be from Japan. Yeah, that's, that's not even coming after anime so much. That's coming after a marketing yeah. sort of but thing. But Crunchyroll that's, is a is a service for anime, and everybody's in Philadelphia. So I had gone maybe a month and a half without logging into Facebook. It was phenomenal. Highly recommend it. Yeah, uh, take 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 a six week vacation. There's nothing you need to promote on Facebook that's going to get a bunch of views or anything like because it was there. Uh, you're fine without it. Take six weeks. Definitely do it. And when I came back, I was treated to people fighting over a sketch that they said supported Trump, and it was about firefighters and outrage mobs and they were fighting like the trump administration from about three degrees of separation because there were trump supporters who hired comedians to do this video about cnn and cnn was kind of in the background of the video it was more so about like this firefighter but because we now have the whole guilt by association thing with well you you cavorted with a trump supporter now oh, yeah. then you're actively supporting racism and you are helping hate and there's this term that i saw for the first time yesterday called hate inflation <laughs> where you don't there's there's only really a couple thousand like avowed hardcore Cantwell style white nationalists in yeah. the country like they there really really aren't that many they each, they each have about 50 sock accounts each so right it, it, it look online it looks like it's a little more and then the way the algorithms promote their stuff because it promotes conflict uh that makes it look like there are more than there are but we're really talking about i mean and this comes from someone who lives in delaware we're talking about a very very small number of people that Hi. actually uh, believe and, 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 and espouse this stuff the entire time but people think they need to be on guard against it and to a certain extent they do but not all the time so they go and they find the the, the closest thing that they have to a yeah. local hate group and a lot of times that's just some dude in a maga hat <laughs> and in la a bunch of the comedians went into this bar called the griffin and there was a proud boy meet up there and the oh, proud no. boys were sitting around like a table unfunnily like chirping to each other about helicopters like being under five five whatever it is you do when you're a proud boy yeah. and uh they came up and the comedians screamed at these people, demanded that they remove their hat. And then when they were like, huh, what the fuck? No. Uh, then that launched a boycott of the Griffin. And then not to be outdone, the New York comedy scene had a had somebody try to launch a boycott of the Creek and Cave, a comedy venue, because, uh, again, somebody was in the crowd of a comedy show, not performing. 
not like being promoted in any way, but was sitting there watching a comedy show wearing a MAGA hat. And they went and interrupted the Legion of Skanks podcast, screamed into the microphone, got like thrown out, whatever. But uh, they tried that there, there was a a hashtag launch called boycott creek and when you go to it it's pretty much everybody just making fun of this dude and maybe two or three like earnest tweets about how we need to we need to stomp hate out of queens whatever whatever you know because new york city god like where can a liberal ever find a break <laughs> but hate inflation it's the, it's one of the big trends so selective ability to tell when someone's kidding and then fi uh, it, greatly expanding your definition of what a hate group is to make it look like you're vanquishing a hate group. Yeah. Two mega trends that we're on. So, you know, we're, we're ahead of the curve here at the Lawberts. Yeah. And uh, by the way, if, if anyone's listening, because I, I know I do have like, I have people that listen to my, my stuff from all sides of the political spectrums, even so far as I know I have like, or I guess they're not in our, they're not alt right anymore. That movement's dead, but whatever. Um, the neo reaction movement, all the way down to like full scale like commies, like tanky commies, mar Marxists, anarchist, communist, all of them. Um, if you if you decide that it's a good idea to punch someone with the MAGA hat, please read it first and make sure it says "Make America Great Again" or "Make America White Again" or whatever. Because there's been like instances of people getting punched. They have like hats that say like make the libertarian libertarian again or make Bitcoin great again or something along those lines that are like parody hats. Just make sure it's not a parody hat, please. Why would you joke about something that involves literal violence against <laughs> black and brown bodies? Right. That's so cr that's uh, of all the like shitty SJW lingo referring to people as bodies is the cringiest, I would have to say. Because front holes up there, but black and brown bodies is also. Oh, you've been there. listening. <laughs> uh, you listened to the front hole episode, I take it? I did listen to okay, the front okay, hole okay. episode, yes. I listened to the whole front hole episode. <laughs> yeah, I'm planning on doing a show with, with, uh, with Larry in the future, but I'm like, you got to get a microphone. You got to get a proper microphone before we do a pod proper yeah. podcast. Um, anyways. Yeah, because I've been really wanting to get this hat because, you know, I've, I've been like a big fan of like the in television. It's like a well, it's defunct now, but like it was like well, probably one of the longest lasting consoles like ever. Like it ran from like 1979 and they finally stopped making games for it in like 92 or something. Like it's a ridiculously long time for a console. Um, yeah, it's a long lifespan. But they had they have a, a a hat that you can buy from the Intellivision store that says um, "Make America Blocky Again," and it's got the little Intellivision running dude who's blocky. And I was like, "That's clever," but I'm pretty sure I'm probably gonna get punched wearing that thing <laughs> because someone's not gonna read it. Why would you joke about that? Yeah, why would you joke about blocks? That's the that that that's my the new like my brother's half block. <laughs> 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 That's the new Darth Vader-esque motto for humorless people. Why would you joke about that? <laughs> yeah. I have heard your jesting, and I find it to be problematic. So, yeah. Um, so, yeah, Crow Crowder's shit the bed. Bo change my mind. Change my mind. <laughs> exactly. It, by the way, did you ever watch the Change My Mind with Socialism where he got fucking wrecked? <laughs> yes, it was great. But the, they're all too long. I don't understand why these things need to be 45 minutes long when all the, like, the best parts could have taken up like two to three minutes of my time. Yeah, we just want to see like, the owning I, parts, pe right? People low-key really hate that. If you're a content provider of any sort, uh, get to the shit. Don't. Yeah. <laughs> it was because crap. Anyways, he lost that one and he lost handedly because he, he, he just assumes that anybody who's for socialism is like a far left social justice warrior. He didn't realize that, no, there's like a European style of socialism, like a conservative, liber uh, not libertarian, like a, a conservative uh, right wing kind of version of socialism that exists in Europe. And, you know, that's starting to spread here a little bit. And so like, this guy named Yosef comes on and just fucking cleans the floor with them. And sure, he's like, he's throwing insults and stuff at him, but. Like Crowder didn't know what to do with him. He was like, uh, what, what, "You're you're you're against immigration and you're socialist. Like, it does not compute." And yeah, he didn't know what to do. And the dude just fucking slew up the floor with them. 
Well, you, you know Crowder's usually screwed when people start asking him to define terms. Yeah. Because that you're, that's instantly taking away his best weapon, which is that he gets to fight up against this, this like nebulous, insane, yeah. like cartoonish version of whatever is on the front of his sign that he wants to argue with you about <laughs> yes. that day. Socialism and, is and evil. And as soon as you're like, oh, what do you mean by blah, blah. Define socialism. That he's like, that it's, bruh, fuck you. Oh, okay. Yeah, real productive conversation we're about to have here. Yeah, what kind of socialism are we talking about here? Are we talking about the Noam Chomsky type of socialism? Or are we talking about the Marx kinds of socialism? Or are we talking about the Benjamin Tucker type of socialism? Like, what kind of talk socialism are you talking about here? I, I, I don't know this stuff. Like a Hitler. Yeah. <laughs> like, like, like I up. think the only people that is that's gonna I think the only thing that's gonna scare these young people away from lives of activism is being just bored to death for hours. Right. Like they need to start sending tankies to uh, to these things and just let paragraphs upon paragraphs spew out of their mouths. And I've noticed this trend lately where people who know each other in real life are offering to meet up in real life to discuss their Facebook fights. And I think this is a good thing. I think I think every Every Facebook fight about politics should have to end with you going to some awful meeting where you have to hear somebody like wallow on and on about how terrible their life is and about how awful Trump is and institutional this and systematic that and implicit this. And you just have to listen to all these terms at a, at a time where you can't check your phone. You can't go on YouTube. You just have to sit there like you're a participant in Occupy Wall Street and listen to all this crap. For can you up just hours? Can you up and down twinkle? <laughs> you just up. You just down twinkled what I said. Right. Let's discuss that. <laughs> and that's the thing is that it, it's, it's. We need to this, come to uh, consensus here. I'm up twinkling the consensus. Move to consensus. <laughs> yeah, it's this prism where you just uh, every time you zoom it a little closer, you, it's just more and more hours of conversation. Yeah, and there's there's never any solution. There's never any practical means to it. It's just they just love hearing themselves talk. It makes them feel like they're smart. Yeah. Well, I sank at this motion, so I'm up twinkling. Uh, you can't see. Uh, and the reason why is because I think that if people go to some some kind of meeting like this. And end up having discussions with real life people about internet fights they had. Um, people are going to quickly go like, "Holy shit, this is fucking retarded!" I, d did I really come here to listen to this crap? Like, am I really here to participate in this crap? Like, what what the hell happened to me where I'm having to go to places to like talk about my feelings over an internet fight? <laughs> I think that will probably well, wake some people up. That's the reason I think that it's very important to keep our meetings as inclusive as possible. Uh, you can't see, but I'm nodding when I say the word inclusive. That's that's that that's a big thing. Is you nod while you say the word inclusive, inclusive, and uh, yeah, and and on and on it would go for just hours. That this is what needs to happen to young people. It's like the first time your dad catches you drinking and he makes you drink a six pack of beer. The first time everybody the fights with anybody about politics, they should be locked in a room with an activist and just forced to listen with no other entertainment options. Yeah. Preferably one with multicolored hair. Uh, I think I think it should be whichever you want the least. So I, uh, you know, if you are at Occupy Wall Street and you think it's cool to fight with people about politics, they should lock you in a room with Stephen Crowder or Ben Shapiro or someone like that. Versus Christopher Cantwell. If you are, yeah, if you are like Christopher Cantwell, then you know, yeah, you should be thrown out of a helicopter or whatever. <laughs> yeah. So, by the way, we should also talk with another thing that happened while we were away was the. Charlottesville 2.0? <laughs> oh, yeah. Bad update of the operating system. <laughs> so I was t I was kept getting told, like, throughout the, the rise of the alt-right, like, this is going to be the new movement. Like, you get off of libertarianism. It's a dead ideology. Come join the alt-right. And I was like, it's not going to work. People are way too turned off by the, even, even the, the hint that it, something may be racist in America. They're not interested in that. And if you're just outright going like, oh, no, no, it's not that we're maybe racist, like we're flat out like we need an ethno state. Um, that's when people start going like, e turning off, I'm a gone, I don't want anything to do with this. And they're like, no, you're tripping, Jim. You're tripping, Jim. Libertarian's dead. Just just, just walk away and become the alt-right. Uh, and then Charlottesville happened and it was like, wow, that was a massive turnout, all 400 of you. And every single person that I know, and except for like a handful who were like, 
who are on the sidelines going like, it's a bad idea to 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 walk in these movements, dude. But pretty much everybody else, including all the was it the uh, the right stuff dot biz and Christopher Cantwell and and Richard Spencer and everybody everybody who called themselves out alt right who were alt right showed up to this thing, including all the like the regular people that I know, but not a lot of other people knew. And there was like four hundred, and I was like, that's pretty much all of them. They all flew out. Four hundred's the highest estimate I've heard. Yeah. I've the, most of the ones I've heard were I'm like being high two, low three digits. I'm being very liberal. But the next one that happened, like, remember, this is the rise. This is going to be the rise. This is this is the future of of of, of right wing movements, right? I'm not even considering myself right wing, but whatever. Um, they they showed up, and there was like t- less than twenty four people, less than two dozen people showed up to this thing. <coughs> like more people came to protest, and more people came to guard them than there actually were people, and it was pathetic. Anytime you can find people who never talk to normal people is always great. And I find that that's the case with a lot of these folks where if you actually think that there's about to be a white ethno state forming, that's a symptom you'd ever get out there and talk to normal people who have no problem working with Mexicans, who don't really care about racial stuff, who are just trying to, to again, get through and live their day. Right. And if you can ever make money off of them, you should definitely do so. So. On August 6th, so earlier this month, I made a cool $4 off oh, of 1,000 to 1 bets that people made with me over Austin Peterson's ascent to the U.S. Senate. <laughs> there were people who whose social media feeds were nothing but Austin Peterson sock accounts. So they thought like, oh, God, there's this groundswell of people in Missouri that – are going to are going to go vote for this guy. No. This is it. It's the libertarian moment. Everything that we've been working for. It's uh it's it's adding up to right now. Give me those numbers. Let me call those voters in Missouri. I'm sure those elderly Christian conservatives are going to want to vote for an atheist uh who's who 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 made his name as an edge lord. Like, <laughs> yes, this is absolutely a perfect fit. And what? What? There's a gutter faggot in Philadelphia offering 1000 to 1. By god, I'm going to be a Bitcoin millionaire. So Four different people bet me a dollar at a thousand to one on Austin Peterson going to the Senate, and lo and behold, lo and behold, he was handily vanquished, not even coming in second, and he sucks. If you like Austin Peterson, you, you suck. suck. <laughs> exactly. And I have your four dollars. Yeah, Austin Peter Austin Austin Peterson joined the Republican Party to try to take over the Republican Party. That's going to go over like a lead blimp. But then again, the last time someone told someone that something was going to go over like a lead blimp, they actually named their band Led Zeppelin and became one of the greatest bands ever. But this time, this is actually true. <laughs> it's actually true. Yeah. Yep. And I I loved how after the election, he was like, well, uh, I haven't made any decisions about my career or my future. Like, you're a professional scammer and grifter. Of course, you haven't made any decisions about your career. It's like me saying I haven't made any decisions about what to get my wife for a birthday present. Christ. Yeah. Oh, we should. We should... Oh, I don't, I don't know what to do with all these zero employable skills I have. Yeah. Spe- speaking of scammers running for office. <laughs> Kokesh, um, I th- we already talked about him getting arrested and all that stuff. I think I think they did a whole episode about that. Just look up the truth about Adam Kokesh, Liberty's Tide Pod. You'll find it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, I guess he's been getting in kind of a kerfuffle with this uh, relatively obscure YouTuber. Uh, it's actually he's actually running a good channel uh, called Voluntarist Japan, and I'll post. A link you know, to the Kokesh has been one of the ones who. Similar to Cantwell, where he's very willing to punch down to people. If yeah. you've got four followers, uh, he'll take you on as if you have four hundred and fifty thousand. Uh, that, that that's, I th- I think that's kind of respectable. But yeah. but yeah. I thought I was going hard in the paint against Kokesh. Man, this guy is going really hard in the paint against Kokesh. Uh, so much so that Kokesh finally uh, had to block the guy. Um, but he, yeah, he was going really hard in the paint. A lot of his. Twitter stuff too is is like really like wow this Kokesh is really a dumbass. Um, I guess he did like this this presidential. We've been saying this for forever. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That the, that like it's it's pretty like you can tell when somebody's read the books versus when someone's listened to the podcast and is repeating the phrases. Right. He's always been somebody who's just listening to the podcast and repeating the right. phrases. Yep. 
the, the, then you got those people who just like they think they've read stuff, but they're Ill- illiterate, and they just say like weird shit, like wages are or prices are determined by praxology, <laughs> or right. uh, Hoppians are ancoms. <laughs> like, uh, anyways, uh, that's that that's really inside baseball there. Um, at least my YouTubers, YouTube subscribers. Anyways, um, so <laughs> this. Uh, what was I going with this? Oh yeah, Coquet, uh, Liberty Japan. I guess like he he found like this 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 campaign that he did, this campaign ad that he did where he's got his shirt off and he's like flexing pretty much and like chopping down some sort of tree. <laughs> he's just like, what the fuck is with this shit? Just he's using like like women are gonna go vote, right? Like women are gonna go like, oh, there's a sexy guy who's running for like this third party i should join that third party and register to vote and go to the convention because i care about libertarian stuff <laughs> yeah yeah it was it was all the it was all the brawny man there's there's nothing that turned women on more than this world than a libertarian convention i'm telling you <laughs> there's nothing it's always amusing nothing. to see people from third parties who start acting like they're like in a major party and they're ascendance to office is inevitable yeah. that's always a hoot by the way paul ryan did the same thing how well did that work out <laughs> there, Who, did, paul, paul ryan yeah he's the he I, I don't know if he's still the speaker but oh he, he uh yeah, yeah, yeah oh you're talking about the shirt off thing yeah, i thought yeah, you were, yeah. I, I thought you meant he ran as a third party i'm like no huh? what oh <laughs> no he tried to do this shirt off thing and was it some of those mag- one of those magazines what was it GQ or Vanity Fair or whatever, uh, but yeah, there was like pictures of him like working out, like he did like a photo shoot of him working out with the shirt off, and like the the idea was this will get the women vote and it didn't, <laughs> they still voted for Obama, and so yeah, but that's, like, that's a shame. Yeah, w- women women are not the kind of people they go. Uh, you know, there's this really sexy guy. I'm going to vote for him because he's sexy. No, men will do that. But like, yeah, <laughs> but, but women won't. Women just go like, OK, he's sexy. But what is his policies? <laughs> do I like him? Yeah. Oh, yeah. Th- yeah. They start getting into the question asking. And that's where Kokash does the worst is whenever people start asking questions and it goes off the prepared. Yeah. Script. So yeah, he, he's he's still thinking he can run, um, and and he thinks that once he gets into office, that he'll just close down the government. Like the like the government will be like, okay, here's the button to shut down the government. Kokesh, don't press it, and he's gonna go up there and press it. <laughs> like, oh yeah, watch this. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> That's not how this works, Kokesh. You just can't like get elected to to president and just shut down everything. That's not how it works. There's things you can shut down. Like you can shut down like a lot of the the alphabet soup organizations. You can shut down like certain things. Like you can you could fire a lot of White House staff. Yeah, you know you can can, uh, reverse a lot of executive orders. But you're just the executive branch. All you do is just sign off for whatever the legislation does. At least the civics class version of it. But even still, you just can't go in there and be like, "All right, we're shutting everything down, guys." Because Congress is going to oh, be yeah. like, no, no, nothing's the least bit complex. It's because no. you have to understand that by the time he gets elected, everybody's just going to be so blown over by how awesome he is. Right. That he took a shirt off when he when he was sworn in. Right. Yep. Yep. Yeah. This is like how the Freedom Ninjas were all going to invade Missouri and make sure that Austin Peterson took his brand of badassery into Hold the on. U.S. Senate. I have to correct you. Otherwise, Randy England's going to send me a very hate filled letter. It's not Missouri. It's Missouri. OK, Missouri. However, however you rednecks want to pronounce it. I got your back. You're fine. <laughs> Unless you're in St. Louis, then it's Missouri. But it's, it's Missouri. Anyways, carry on. Before I so rude sounds like it. misery to me. Exactly. Oh, yeah, the state of misery. I wouldn't. I wouldn't be opposed to moving there. It's a great place to be a prepper. If you want to j- build a bunker in the Ozark Mountains, it's one of the best places to be. And being around rednecks is actually my ideal situation for shit hitting the fan. Can, uh, I will say, Kansas City is pretty pretty fun. I like Kansas City. Just don't call it Kansas City. It's Kansas City, Missouri. Give me a bunch. Of, give me a bunch of good old boy rednecks uh, at the moment of the apocalypse that can fix things, and that hate everybody that they haven't known since birth, and that have a bunch of guns and ammo. That's that's who I want to be around. Right. Uh, at, for the collapse of society. 
Might as well go back to Ohio. But, you know, <laughs> whatever. Ah, man, is I know Cleveland's bad. Wait, what? I know I know Cleveland is bad. <laughs> it, what do you mean? What do you mean by bad? Uh, it's so like next to Detroit, bad. It's like Detroit Junior. No, nah, it's a. Uh, I would no. It's it's a thinking man's Detroit. It's not. It's not. It's not Detroit Junior. That's Toledo. You're thinking of Toledo's Detroit Junior. Okay. Um, James Weeks would probably be able to say with a little more expertise. I think he lives closer to there. He might have been to Toledo within the last twenty years, as I have not. But yeah, I always got the impression that that was more that uh, Cle- Cleveland has okay parts, especially the parts LeBron cleaned up. But that's not where I'm looking to be. I'm looking to be around the Amish near Ashtabula. That's where I'm looking to Ooh. go for the apocalypse. Is be around there. Uh, you know, they're used to being separate from society. And then the people in Ashtabula County who aren't Amish are just some of the redneckiest rednecks you'll ever see. So I'm gonna I'm gonna dis- I'm gonna have to disagree. That's probably not gonna be the most optimal place during the apocalypse. I think I think if you live in Vegas, hear me out. If you live in Vegas and you spend a good deal of time here and you get used to the heat and the apocalypse happens, you got plenty, plenty of places to go around, and you're already going to be accustomed to the heat of, of the nuclear uh, f- fires, I guess, um, and you'll be ready for it. And then when the w- nuclear winter comes, you'll be you'll be like praising, okay, fine, great, it's finally cold, it finally cools off around here. Uh, you got plenty of place to go. Um, the federal government's not going to exist anymore, so you got plenty of land, and you're going to have plenty of uh, got everything plants. but water. Well, we got Lake Mead. But it's got a it's got a B fifty two bomber at the bottom of it, so there's that. Legit, there's a B fifty two bomber at the bottom of that thing. It's not, I had heard that before. I didn't yeah. know it was true though. Yeah, 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 it's not just it's not just Fallout Legend. Like in World War Two, like a plane took off there and it had a bad takeoff and it fell into the lake. And they're just like, eh, we'll just keep it there. What's the point? Eh, we'll make this a water reservoir. <laughs> Why not? <laughs> yeah. Yeah. What, 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 can, what can happen? What can happen? What's the worst that can happen? Well, the water tastes like pool. Like you're drinking pool water because they have to put, pump tastes- so much chlorine in it to make it like not deadly. Well, I guess if you do have Lake Mead and you have an Alex Jones water filter, you're fine. Right. Well, I don't oh, know. Oh, he's screwed. That happens. It's the last time. We, we he's been expelled from polite society. Uh, oh, <laughs> there was something that happened. The, was it yesterday? Yesterday, yes, but go ahead. Yeah, fill fill us into up to yesterday. <laughs> up to yes, I don't know what happened yesterday. I was I mean I was up, doing things. up to yesterday, and then I'll he got thrown it. off of everything. You can't find right. him on YouTube. You can't. Yeah, he's off of them all. YouTube, Facebook, Twitter. Not a, uh, Alex Jones free zones. You can't even like even not gifts even in a lot of places. Even Spotify, iTunes. Yeah. He's off. He's off of Spotify. Yeah. It's a shame. Yeah, Spotify. It's was not like, a shame. Hey, it's the predictable start. consequences of your own freely chosen actions. But it's a shame, I guess. Yeah. So, what is like some of the things that Alex Jones talks about regularly when it comes to the gays, right? The gay bombs, the gay chemical bombs, right? It's a gay bomb, baby. They're turning, they're putting chemicals in the water that turns the frogs gay. Uh, the, don't drink the water because there's chemicals in it. It'll make you gay. Don't drink the juice boxes because they'll make you gay too. Everything will make you gay. Everything is everybody's transsexuals now because they're drinking the the gay bombs. Uh, get the water filters. Get the super male vitality or whatever the bullshit soy thing that soy based product that he's selling today <laughs> that'll that'll cure you of the soy boy. Um, but apparently uh, he did a show yesterday or I think it may be the day before. Anyways, doesn't matter. He did a show and he was zooming in on one of his uh, on his cell phone because he was showing the website to his new phone uh, to his new website where he's selling more supplements. I think I don't know. Uh, and then he hits the right before he like the camera zooms off of it. He hits the back button on his phone, and it shows all the tabs of all the things he was looking at recently. And one of them was tr- tranny porn. So all right, Alex Jones. Sell stuff to protect you from the gay bomb, but the gay bomb got him anyway. So, just fair warning: if you're buying this stuff, if you didn't, if you're buying this stuff to not turn into a trans woman, or be interested in trans trans porn, uh, you probably want to get your money back now. Oh please, his kids probably asked him what it was. Yeah. <laughs> Dad, Daddy, what's, what's tranny porn? Bomb? 
Let me show you here. Well. We're going to go to trinysex.com. <laughs> Chickswithdicks.com. Yeah. I guess the particular one he was watching. It's wired, over for the cisgenders. The the particular one that it was on his phone was like a one of like a, a trans woman fucking a guy. So it wasn't even like, oh, just, you know, I just like a little decoration above the butthole. It was like, no, like this. he's apparently he's into like, is it, is it still pegging if it's not a dildo? I don't know. I don't understand these things. Where's MK we don't when call you need, it that. But. Yeah, where, where's, MK, where's MK when you need her? <laughs> she's out out getting pegged <laughs> or she's out pegging rather <laughs> yeah oh please it's 12 noon eastern she won't wake up for another four hours yeah well i think she's in the middle of the woods that's why we couldn't get her on you were too busy telling ghost stories that's why it took you a while to get on Ooh, yeah it's been heavy ghost tour season yeah it's weird i've noticed that this year so for the prior like two three years people have been really shitty with recording the tour so it's a it's a i i do a tour it's called the ghost tour i walk Happily around named. i i give people this tour about 90 ghosts, minute called the ghost 90 tour. minute long ghost story tour where i walk around old philadelphia talk about the history talk about the paranormal sightings that have happened in the area whatever and social media started to become more and more of a pro I've been doing this since 2006. Social media over time started to become more and more of a problem. And the last like two, three years, the it's been really bad with people recording and with people wanting to stream the tour. And at the beginning, I try to nip it in the bud. So at the preamble, I give them at the beginning of the tour. I say, hey, don't record any of the stories. Don't, you know, stream the tour, blah, 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 blah. But this year, I decided to mix it up a little bit. And I said, you know, don't try to record any of the stories. Don't stream any of the tour. In general, try to be a good citizen with your phone. And the tour starts right in front of Independence Hall. They're standing right next to the Liberty Bell when I tell them this. And for some reason, the appeal to patriotism <laughs> of be a good citizen with your phone works in a way that, hey, don't be a dick and do this behavior that like you agreed to not do by buying a ticket for the tour in the small print. Uh, instead of like any of the, hey, honor your word sort of thing, like no appeal works as well as George Washington really doesn't want you to stream the tour. <laughs> or maybe it's, George it's Washington very... does. George Washington would be like, why are you telling these people? Yeah, dude, do? George it's Washington freedom. has Periscope. He wants to see the tour. Yeah. <laughs> Like, don't tell me what to do. What are you? What are you? Some kind of red coat or something? I'll text your whiskey. Uh, <laughs> that's what he did. Yeah, I know. <laughs> George Washington sucked. But but you can't. You also can't do the ghost tour that way. Like if you're there to talk about ghosts, like nobody wants. Like nobody wants to hear this libertarian preamble about how all your favorite founding fathers were actually assholes. And like there's <laughs> there's been a couple people that have known me from like libertarian stuff who took the ghost tour and they were really disappointed that I didn't like go into some stem winder about how the sales tax is the same thing as rape or whatever. Uh, like no, sorry. Like all the messaging can't be too. To right. your exact biases at all you, times. You, you, but you should say like what ghosts break the NAP and which ones just scare you, and as in a violation of the non-aggression <laughs> principle. This one doesn't spook you, but he, he he won't he won't steal your stuff. He respects the nap. However, he does wake people up in the middle of the night, and if you view sleep as their property, there's potentially an argument that could be made. <laughs> They're taking your sleep away. It's theft. Yeah. If you view interrupting someone's slumber as physical aggression, then, then they literally violated your nap by violating your nap. They violated your nap twice. Yeah. It's, it's <laughs> the nap paradox. <laughs> it's rough. Yeah. I feel bad for these people. That, that, that have to like walk through life figuring out. You know, I, it's it's got to be as bad as being into social justice. Like, instead of walking around figuring out what's problematic, you just walk around figuring out what's a violation and what isn't. And then you tell people what's a violation and what isn't. And s even fewer people care. Because that's the thing is at least the social justice people can put things in language where normies will be like, oh, shit, that's actually racism. That sucks. Like, racism's bad. But the NAP people... They've got no sort of like relatability to normies, so they're just like, "Well, 
under the hoppy and fray work, but <laughs> they're like, what? what, 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 what? Like, fuck out of here. Yeah, the, so these co- we can't go see these ghosts because they actually have a uh, covenant community that we can't go into, and they, they're specifically spooks only. <laughs> Sorry. So we can't go in there, but just know that there's there. Yeah, so we, we, we've spoken to the chairman of the council. They can't come to a consensus, so. <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think, was here. there anything else that we missed along the way? Because it's, it's been, I think, early July. Is, nah, we just June, came rather. in here with like a punch list of graves to dance on. Steven Crowder, Adam Kokesh, Austin Peterson, and we got most of them. Like, yeah, we got all the big yeah, names. Yeah, yeah. And Jones. for anybody who's super into so just I'm sorry that they're all straight white males. I yeah. really apologize. Uh, we'll try to find people to unjustly attack in the future who are more representative of America. Well, Molyneux is part Jewish. Does that count? Because that's something happened is? with him, too. It was Stefan Molyneux. Uh, well, so is Kokesh. But... Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Um, yeah, so Stefan Molyneux almost got banned from YouTube, and I came out and was oh, like... Oh, I heard it, I heard he was banned. I, I didn't hear it was an almost. I. Yeah. Well, the, he got like two strikes, and then they reversed it. Uh, and I was I was uh, I was going like, um, yeah, I'm like, I'm against all these people getting banned from social media. Like, yeah, that's a that's a bad thing to do. But I think Molyneux probably should be kicked off of YouTube. Nothing else. Right. He can keep his Twitter. He can keep all that other stuff. But didn't we just go through this whole thing a couple years ago where he like, you know, filed some false DMCA's against one of his critics and lied about it for an entire year, even even lying to Joe Rogan's face about it. <laughs> And doing everything he, he could. lied to Joe Rogan. Yeah, yeah. And it, you want to lie to me? That's one thing. Don't lie yeah, to don't. run JRE. <laughs> and he ended up getting banned from the show. And what else happened because of all that? Um, you know, he ended up getting sued, and that was the only way to get him to admit that. Okay, yeah, this this critic wasn't actually doxing kid, uh, doxing people's kids and stuff. I just, I just that wasn't that wasn't her. It took a fucking lawsuit in order for that to happen and to, and to get her channel reinstated. Um, and still, YouTube, uh, huh, interesting. Yeah, so here's the thing. Like, this is what really pisses me off about YouTube. YouTube, like, when you file a DMCA, like, I've gone up to the process, up to the point of actually clicking, like, I confirm or whatever. Just going up through that process, filling it everything out and whatever and reading everything uh, just to see what the process is like. I didn't actually file any DMCAs. Um, because I don't believe in <laughs> intellectual property. I don't think I have since I found it was on YouTube. But it, either way, um, but it says on there like you're, it warns you're you not trying to time. mundane my Matt right here. No, you're, I'm, you're not like actually <laughs> filing a about bunch of Matt. Well, mundane Matt didn't file false DMCA's. He just flagged everybody who disagreed with them <laughs> or made fun of them or whatever. Uh, but he didn't do that. No, he was out collecting boulders. I should have fucking led with that. Yeah, that, that's why we didn't do a show. I was too busy getting boulders. Uh, <laughs> I was too busy collecting boulders with my son. Anyways, um, no, um, it, it tells you, like, you're, you're going to lose your account. If you follow, file false DMCAs, you will lose your account. And every time I hear someone file false DMCAs, none of them has lost their account. The guy that DMC, false DMCA'd my YouTube poop didn't lose his account. Uh, the guy... Was it Venom Fang X who th- uh, who DMCA Thunderfoot didn't didn't get didn't lose his account Molyneux didn't lose his account like every uh, nah. like I think the game publisher that the, the DMCA what's his name fucking the the Jim what the fuck is his goddamn name the the fat video game reviewer guy yeah now everybody everybody says that they're against outrage mobs but there's not real there's not really much downside into actually no. being in an outrage mob. No. Uh, so some of the comedians that you see on Netflix right now gleefully, like to this day, take part in these outrage mobs. Chelsea Handler is one of the worst of the entire bunch. Yeah, but yeah, I was like, no, Molyneux should. There was there, I surprisingly didn't get that much backlash. Surprisingly, did not. It was weird. But anyways, hmm. speaking of YouTube, I think we should probably wrap up with the nice little story about the Tsar Bomba. Have you, did did you hear about any of this stuff? Nope. <laughs> okay. Um, so I'm, I'm, the only reason why I'm talking about it is because, again, my, my, my podcasters, podcast listeners probably haven't heard any of this stuff. But there's this YouTuber, an ANCAP YouTuber, and he – so there's like this – I'm still bearing the lead. There's so much to talk about here. Uh, so there's like this trend on YouTube with an, uh, libertarian anarchists uh, where they – 
have like this, and it's one particular artist. They all get their artwork from this one particular artist that makes them like a little OC, like an original character, kind of like my, like furries and My Little yeah. Ponies do, uh, but AMCAP. Um, and sometimes there's crossover. And um, one in particular is, goes by the name of Esoteric Entity, and he is a furry. And so his OC is is a furry, like uh, a fox, like a white fox in, a, in, a, in an astronaut uniform. Um, so he thought it would be a good idea after um, a communist – I think she's a communist. A communist trans woman proposed poses as, as a 16-year-old. She's 18, but she posed as a 16-year-old ANCAP girl and was, like, flirting with him and sending him uh, nude pictures just to fuck with him because just because everybody loves to troll this guy because he's an idiot. Um, and then that led to, like, a big fallout where he threatened to, like, release her, her nudes. And everybody got upset with him over that. So he... Tried to like pretend like oh no it was just something else and he, he told a lie to cover up for it, and then when it turned out that it's blatantly a lie, he told more lies to cover up for that, and then when that turned out to be like bullshit, it, it just kept you know you, you've seen Meet the Parents right? Yep. Okay. Meet the Parents thing. Like you tell one lie, he has to cover for it with another lie until the point where he's sitting at the dinner table telling everybody how he used to milk cats. Right? It's that sort of thing. Uh, <laughs> anyways. So um, I have nipples, Greg. Can you milk me? Yeah. <laughs> but, but there was no resolve at the end of the story. It just keeps building more and more and more and more and more lies until he gets deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper and deeper. And he's not particularly smart about lying. So nobody's buying it except for like a few like retards, like YouTube retards. Anyways, um, so this guy reaches out to him and sees that like all these like these these leftist anarchists are even jumping into the fray. Right. <laughs> and to, to dogpile on him, too, uh, I guess pun intended. And uh, he says, like, hey, I hate all these. I'm an I'm an uh, anarcho communist. And I but I hate these guys, too. Um, I have proof that they're running like this doxing. Uh, these these servers that they're on on Discord, they're all doxing servers and they're all dedicated to like doxing people. And I want you to help me expose them. And then he got involved with that. Sure. And then as they were investigating. Right. It turned out they had proof of pedophilia, that they were all somehow all involved in pedophilia activity, and they were all trading child pornography and terrible, awful, terrible things. And so they were like, okay, so in one month, we're going to release all of this data. And then people were asking him, like, if you have proof that they're, like, doing illegal activity, like pedophilia and trading child pornography, like, are you guys reporting it? And they're like, oh, no. We will. We will report it. Trust me. We, we will report it, guys. We'll report it. But we, we want everybody to pay attention to this podcast. It's coming out this day, and we're all going to release the data. You can see for yourself and see that we were right. Um, and then, like, one of the guys that was involved with it ended up, like, saying, fuck this. Uh, I'm, I'm going to blow the whistle on I know Jim is talking about this stuff on YouTube and how they're full of shit. Um, and basically blew the whistle and was saying that, like, this guy, this esoteric entity guy was, like, soliciting child pornography from, from from them like basic and he even admits it in one of his videos like he shows like a screen capture of of him reporting to discord saying that i dared him to send me child pornography um and we're like that's soliciting child pornography you idiot that's illegal um to <laughs> And then he was going to take that child pornography that he got through soliciting child pornography and then edit it to make it friendly for YouTube. So people can go on YouTube and see the oh evidence my God. Of, of child pornography, <laughs> but blur out all the nasty bits, you know, because that's legal too, right? Distributing child pornography, that's legal. Um, and then and then when, when he did this, this thing with me and I released the podcast... He comes out and he goes like, oh, no, like that never happened or whatever. Um, it's all completely fake. And look, here's proof that we actually did report it to the authorities. And the authorities that he reported it to was Discord. That he was like, but I never had child pornography on my computer. That's not true. And then just today, like he – or not today. Uh, yesterday, he admitted – or no, two days ago, he admitted – I'm so bad with the last three days, aren't I? I keep doing this. <laughs> but um, a, few, a couple of days ago, I guess, he basically said like, oh, no, no. I wasn't editing child pornography to put it on YouTube. Uh, I was editing child pornography to give it to the FBI, and it's like, okay, great. Now you're admitting to uh, editing child pornography. 
<laughs> or tampering with evidence, right? Is that what you're doing? Like none of the, like every lie he tells, it just it just keeps backfiring. Like gets okay. buried in a bigger one. Yeah, 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 yeah. And it's just like, oh, so you're not involved in this crime. You're involved in this even worse crime. Oh, you're not involved in that crime. Okay, well, you're involved in this other worse crime. Like how how worse is it going to get? <laughs> After all, either way. So this is this Sar Bomba data drop drops right um, somewhere in the middle of all this. When you go through all of it, and, and most of it's like, like proof that they ha- that they're working with ISIS, and proof that they're pedophiles, and proof that they're doxing people, and the only thing that that's of, of like, most most of the pedophilia, like no, I take that back. All of the pedophilia stuff was, um, hey guys, maybe we should consider lowering the age of consent in the United States to something along the lines of what they have in Europe, where it's like sixteen or seventeen, um. Which is like it's a legitimate discussion. It's gross, but whatever. Or someone actually doing the uh, you know the copy pasta. You know the I see you're new around here. Just to let you know, there's a difference between pedophilia and ebophilia. I mean, it's verbatim. Yeah, the copy pasta. You can actually Google it and see like word for word. He really just copied and pasted it as a joke. Well, yes, but it's 2018, so I've got the selective ability to tell when someone's kidding or not. Right. So, haha. <laughs> so yeah, there's that. The stuff about ISIS is all like. It's all like uh, kind of like 4chan because one of the servers that they're going after was Lefty Poll, which is literally like poll, but for lefties, you know, like 4chan poll, but for lefties. Uh, so they have like a lot of jokes, which one of the jokes they like to tell a lot is like, oh, we're, we're supporting ISIS because they're taking down the imperialists. But they're not really, you know, in fact, they also support like people uh, like they support like factions that just that go after um, Syrians. But. Also against ISIS too. Like that, if anyone, that's what they would be going for. Um, and they're not a terrorist group, as far as I know. I'm not sure. Whatever. Um, and so that you know, a lot of that stuff was like tongue in cheek jokes. And then the doxing stuff was this is this is the proof that they're doxing. It's just like a couple of people going like, you know, I don't know. Like people having moral dilemmas about whether or not it's an okay thing to dox fascists. And it's not like saying like, no, it's good. It's just like them going like, I don't know. I don't know if it's it's a good thing or not. You know, change my mind. You know, <laughs> that's <what I> mean. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> is d- dox, doxing ain't doxing fascists ain't so good. Change my mind type of thing. Um, and then there was like some stuff between like a, a YouTuber called Finnish Bolshevik who was dating a girl who was sixteen who lived in the United States, but he lives in Sweden, so it was legal there. Uh, and there was like an instance where they were having like um, kind of like a it looks like it looked like a fake role play, like a like a humorous sexual role play fantasy where, you know, she's in a gulag and he's raping her. And it's yeah. A lot of like comedy, normal day. Yeah. Like commie commie jokes, you know, like gulags, raping, whatever. Uh, anyways, and that was it. That was that was supposed to be the big data drop that was going to expose all these leftist YouTubers like Batco and. Um, who else was on that list? Uh, Thought Slime. And you probably don't even know who any of these people are. Um, I kind of nope. didn't either. Um, and it was it was just the biggest fucking fail. And, yeah, so now he's doing this thing where he's um, trying to defend himself from claims. And now he's now he's doing the mundane Matt thing by, by uh, <laughs> false flagging uh, Mr. Dapperton for pointing all this out. And, like, someone like, look at the screenshot. This is what the screenshot is saying. And he's going, like, that's not what the screenshot is saying. Well, he's like, well, what's the screenshot saying? It's saying not that. <laughs> flag his flag his Twitter. <laughs> it's, it's, <laughs> it's so it's so bizarre. It's the one of the most bizarre things ever. And this kid, like, doesn't know shit. Like, he, he always says things. Like, I think the things I was saying about Hoppians being ANCOMs, um... Prices being determined by praxology, um, all these like weird like things that do- doesn't make any sense. It's just complete. You mean salads. priceology? <laughs> Prax. He meant to say priceology prax- is the name of my merchandising course for starting assistant managers at Family Dollar. <laughs> okay. He meant to say praxeology, but even still, that's not true. That's praxeology is like a methodology to understand how economics work. It doesn't determine prices. priceology is related to my theory of sellativity. <laughs> yeah. But yeah, it's it's so fucking bizarre. This and, and and it's 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 kind of weird, like seeing like a bunch of like these, and there's there's a couple of good people that like follow him and and just like take his advice because they're like friends with him, and they go around like repeating these things. Like Facebook doesn't make a dollar. Facebook and Google are not profitable. They don't make any money. Uh, they only they only stay afloat through government subsidies. And it's like they're nonprofits. Yeah. 
look at their financials. Like they just pulled in $110 billion in revenue for t- fiscal year 20, uh, 2017. You can go and look at it. On yeah. their oh, public, publicly, publicly available information. Yeah, yeah. yeah. The, the Bitcoin Cash people are big on this too. <laughs> it's uh, <laughs> stating facts that are disprovable, but in instance. Yeah, yeah. yeah. It, it's it's so bizarre and ridiculous. But yeah, that's pretty much what the SAR bomb data drop was. They're supposed to expose all these lefty YouTubers, but it, all it did was just expose like this fucking moron that he was involved in soliciting, distributing, and editing child pornography. Yay. Yeah. You do it to own the cons. <laughs> yeah, right. So that's that's why I started the show off with. Um, this is why the show is brought to you by soliciting child pornography to own the libs. This and it all goes back to Crowder, right? <laughs> the only sponsor we can get after that coordinated campaign to get all of our sponsors to abandon the yeah, show. Oh. The only one who stuck with us after all this time was downloading child pornography to own the cons. We we had a we had an offer for a sponsorship that I declined. Do you want to take a guess who it might have been? The right stuff. Biz. <laughs> no. <laughs> Close. <laughs> no. Not Gender close. Depot. No. No. Uh, I was. It was the Free State Project offer, and I was like, yeah, I'm. I'm not completely on board with, this, <laughs> with them, and we've been critical of them in the past. And I'm just like, yeah, this is, that's not going to work. It's not going to work, my dude. And I'm kind of hesitant on taking any kind of advertisement. I think we gave them a free mention, though. So if someone out there is thinking, like, "Well, God, what's the Free State Project?" Now they might go yeah, Google yeah, yeah. it. So now you've given them your services for free. Hey, you dimwit. It, I, yeah, but I have I have major issues with management there, <laughs> and the idea of the Free State Project. But hey, if you want to move to New Hampshire, if you, you have gonna... major issues with management, you're the ideal person they probably want. But yeah. that's the great irony of the Free State Project. Yeah, and I was just like, yeah, you know what? If if you guys want to go there, that's fine. I don't think it's going to work. <laughs> I really don't. And it's going to be gonna cold. Work. That's the other yeah, thing. That, you're going to have to live in snow. And it's not like snow like, oh, I live in Kansas. No, no, no. This is northeast. Yeah. This is, you're in New, New England now. It's going to be hell. Um, I'll pass on that. Mm-hmm. Pass, pass, pass. I know there's a lot of great people who live out in New, uh, New Hampshire. Not so. Also people who are not so great. Like I know there's like this sovereign citizen tech journalist. Um, fucking terrible. Um, he's out there, and you're going to have to deal with that guy. So on second thought, you probably should not move to the Free State Project. So, Ah, but when sovereign citizens don't l- transfer places of residence from one to another, they don't move. They free travel. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah, so if there aren't any fringes on your Lalbert's flag, I'm afraid we're done here. Okay. <laughs> I'm, I'm th- maybe there will be fringes on his... Uh, on on his workout machines probably, but who knows? Who knows? And his girlfriend is on the fringes with all that feminist stuff, which is kind of weird, kind of pairing, right? The sovereign citizen dating a a feminist sex t- podcast, which she's great. Don't get me wrong, I, she's great, wonderful. But I don't know about the sovereign citizen guy. He seems like a he seems seems like a bad pairing to me. I don't know. Anyways, well, of the two, if there's, if the, like just on paper, if you're, if you're gonna right. have to be doubtful of one of the two, right. you assume that the, you assume that the sex educator is probably just boring, and that uh, sovereign the sovereign, citizen. and the sovereign citizen is going to be exciting, which is worse than boring. Yeah, but and dangerous, dangerous, right? Too. Dangerous. Yeah, 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 and 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 perhaps dim. Yeah. Uh, one who likes, uh, unironically likes Dragon Force. So just, just be very aware. This is this is some dangerous territory. Stay away. Stay away. Stay away. Um, but anyways, is there anything else that we need to talk about <laughs> before we wrap this up? Because I'm starting to get tired. Uh, I've been up all night. I I got a I got a couple pitches. There's a video on. There's a documentary on YouTube. Everybody needs to watch called "An Inconvenient Goof." <laughs> it is what basically I've been doing with the last couple months of my life, and that's tracking the doings of failed stand-up comedian Joe Matarese, who is a 53-year-old <laughs> Italian comedian, and he talks like this. And there he's got is 30 years tra- of experience, though. Don't he's don't got 30 him. years of experience, and he's been on Letterman twice. And he, uh, he, so depending on when you talk to him, Joe either wants you to think that he's about to make it or that he's already made it. And he will tell you all these grandiose stories that are disprovable with one Google search. (laughs) 
And there's a whole generation of comedians that do this. Like I've known them for years and it's just now that they're actually getting exposure on the internet. But people that started doing comedy between the years of, I want to say like the seventies to about 1995 when the internet first started coming out of the scene that were reared in that scene. So your Artie Langs, your Joe Matarises, your people like this. Uh, they were they came up in a comedy scene where you were constantly lying about how well you were doing. You were like, oh, yeah, I made a video for VH1. They played it, blah, 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 blah. And there was not really much people could do to prove you wrong. So, like, you just went out with those credits. Right. Uh, if they were true, it was one thing. If not, nobody really cared. Nobody ever hunted you down, whatever. Then a lot of those people became successful and they quit having to lie. So, like, Artie Lang doesn't have to, like, tell you lies about, like, he's, he's being on the Howard Stern show, so he doesn't have to to tell you, you know, I've done this, that, and the third. Matt Reese, on the other hand, has only only really like has these couple late night credits to his name. So he's constantly embellishing about all these people oh. he knows and all these uh, clubs that he's playing and this, that, and the third. And an inconvenient goof is this documentary made by this British person who follows him. And there's a lot of British people who track the doings of Joe Metteris because they play a lot of reruns of America's Got Talent in England, <laughs> and he was on America's Got Talent. So they're like, who is this fellow? And then <laughs> it, it ended with this full 50-minute long documentary. I can be seen in the documentary about 38 minutes in uh, taunting Joe in the live chat of his breakdown. He did a live uh, <laughs> mental breakdown on Periscope. And if you pause the movie and just look at the comments on the right, you'll see me uh, descending Joe further into madness via taunting. <laughs> but the entire thing is great. My pinned tweet on Twitter right now is a film trilogy uh, of that that kind of gives a good overview of the po of the podcast that I'm doing right now, where it's an inconvenient goof, uh, the prequel to an inconvenient goof, which is Joe doing a pilot for a TV show where comedians come on and fix his life as if they're therapists. And the pi <laughs> the pilot for the show was Jim Norton and Anthony Cumia coming and sitting – <laughs> sitting with Joe and like talking to him about how his life is wrong and it soon just very quickly devolves into this roast and Joe was very upset with it wasn't sure if he was going to release it but the <laughs> But the problem was that he'd already taken money for these people and told them, like, you'll get access to this, like, if you give me money. So he'd give them money. Instantly, it gets ripped and uh, put on the Internet for all time. And that's the prequel to An Inconvenient Goof, is this Fixing Joe. And then uh, the third one, the Return of the Jedi of the trilogy. <laughs> is a bunch of frantic calls that my co-host Karen made into Joe's podcast because Joe used to have this podcast called Fixing Joe where they would, you know, try to fix Joe's life. And she would call in and he'd try to be, he'd be like, all right, now I want to hear your views about soccer. World Cup's coming up. Like, how do you feel about soccer? And she would call up and give just these heart-wrenching calls. She'd be like, hey, Joe, it's Karen from Philly. My life is so bad right now. The doctor just put me on this new estrogen regimen, and my body's not really taking to it. And uh, life just doesn't seem worth the living, but I'm glad you're well. And also, soccer's really good. Okay, have a good day, Joe. <laughs> So there's this compilation video of all her calls into his show, and that kind of rounds out the trilogy. But yeah, Fall Down the Joe Matarese Rabbit Hole, An Inconvenient Goof is the name of the movie yeah, on I'll, YouTube. I'll, I'll, I'll post a link if you got it yep. in the show. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yeah, so basically what you're saying is he's, he's the Christian Western Chandler of, of stand-up comedy. Uh, yeah, okay. except the, the thing is with Chris Chan, like there's, I, there's I, the sorry, autism. Christine there's the Christine He's Chris. There, she's Christine now. Sorry. Yeah. Well, there's there's there's, there's the, the autism camera. angle where like where with with Chris Chan, it's like, am I like making fun of somebody who's legitimately mentally ill? Whereas with Joe, it's oh, wait, this is a guy who does antidepressants because he's bored and he just sucks and he's kind of dib. And you're, you know, there's, you don't have any moral qualms about making fun of somebody like that. No. So even after he sends his goons to take your phone away, which he did to me in Cherry Hill, New Jersey, his hometown, because he was doing a fundraiser show and then only his family showed up except for me and Karen. <laughs> so, <laughs> so Karen. <laughs> oh. 
I have to go but down no. this rabbit hole now. This is going to be my new yeah. obsession. And, the, and then after like you watch the videos about this now, after after you watch the film trilogy, then what you'll want to start doing is listening to the episodes of the podcast. Monumental waste of time is the name of it. It's all on the like the same place, and. Yeah, Karen has 27 episodes so far. We're working on episode 28 right now. Yeah. And the executive producer is an anonymous troll who's been following Joe for years and years. <laughs> yeah, okay. If, if, it was, if it was done by a troll and it's trolling someone who's a Spurg, I'm down. Sign me up. I want the full yep. season pass. I, I want it streaming, high, de- high definition. I want it all. <laughs> But the documentary is just so great. Like it should be submitted to film festivals. <laughs> and when it when it came out, it was very difficult for me to have any conversation with anybody who would not watch an inconvenient <laughs> goof. All right, settled. You sold me. I'm yep. sold. I'm sold. <laughs> See, the thing that I that I was pitching is like a bunch of like boring YouTube videos um, that if you piece it all together, it becomes very funny. Um, but it's not funny on its own. This seems brilliant all the way around. Yeah, this stands alone. <laughs> this is a standalone. This is a standalone saga. Yeah, mm-hmm. uh, I could do this. <laughs> Joe Martis, uh, uh, a, a lol, Joey Mattresses, a lolcow story. Yeah, yeah. Joey Mattresses, lolcow, and then uh, uh, it, in the same vein, there's also a great documentary about Anthony Cumia called Anthony Cumia's Demented World. Uh, it's a four-parter. It's by the Beige Frequency Channel on YouTube. Uh, hmm. Definitely recommend that as well if you want to make it a full film festival weekend. Jeez, just tracking loser comedians from New Jersey. You know, it, this, it, you know. is there is there any updates on uh, my favorite loser comedian, which is uh, which I don't remember his name because because it, it's so great, Carlos Mencia. Nope, no, is he, he's, just, he's just dead, huh? His career. Oh, he over. plays casinos. He he oh. came down here. Uh, yeah, he was in Delaware, and Delaware's happy to get any celebrity who wants to deign to come here. Yep. Yeah, played Dover Downs. <laughs> All right, man. So wh- where can they find you? Uh, Sumo Sexual on Twitter, also on Periscope, where I'm dancing and uh, taking any questions that people have live. I see you got a uh, fan who likes to to post pictures or like screen caps of your dancing. On Twitter, yeah, seen quite yeah, a yeah, yeah. Steve Miller shout, fan. shout outs, uh, and th- yeah, Sumosexual on there, Sumo, uh, Miller twice, I think. My or no, I think I'm still under Sumosexual on Periscope. Yeah, aprons are not a crime. Dot com. Get yourself an apron. Got one. Got one. They're the best. Yes, uh, what uh, monumental waste of time is the name of the podcast on Laughcast. Dot com. Yep. All right, man. Good talking to you again. Likewise. Yep. Hope all is well for you. Go bet on the Seattle Storm to win the WNBA title. Oh, shit. Yeah, you're, you'll probably oh. still be able to get them for about like plus 150. And when it'll end game? with him. Uh, five. Uh. My time. So so like two your time. But uh, you'll, you'll still be able to get them for a decent price after this game today. Like if they win today, it won't go down too much. You'll probably still get roughly even money. But right. yeah, yeah, I need to start contacting you about sports betting. So I can just put a little bit and, in there. And uh, if you don't want to bet on them, you want like more of a long shot, take the Phoenix Mercury. They have the three biggest, baddest lesbians on the planet on that team. <laughs> and in the WNBA, if you've got the lesbians, you've got like a lot of power on your team. Is there any hope so. for the Aces? They're they're already out of the playoffs. They look good though. That Asia Wilson's really really good. Okay. Like they looking forward. There's a good future for the Las Vegas Aces. Hmm. There you have it. Yep. I, if I, we I haven't know. lost them by now, yeah, oh man, yeah, yeah. WNBA I'm, talk. I'm, tell, I'm telling you, man, that that fucking that brings in the, like we should have led with that. <laughs> I like to think that there's one Adam Kokesh like fanboy out there that was like that was like oh, you know what like they talk shit about my hero but once they started talking about the fucking WNBA playoffs I was done fuck those people. <laughs> <laughs> All right, man. I'll talk to you later. All right, talk to you later. Hail yeah, Satan. I'll see you.